Yes. Wait, you really did play the Luigi? Are you, are you joking? No, it's real. <laughs> it's real spooky. Why did you do that? Why did you play the Ouija board? Because I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh. do you believe in Ouija boards? Oh. They're real. <laughs> That's like saying, do you believe the sky is blue? It fucking is. I never played with one before, ever. Okay. I heard, though, that they used to sell them at Toys R Us. You could just buy them right next to the Legos. What are they No called? wonder <laughs> kids are the ones always getting possessed in all the scary movies. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda Ray. And uh, I was born in a polygamous cult, and every year, I like to do a creepy story from my cult segment. I've been doing it for three years in a row now. And I'm kind of running out of stories. <laughs> so Allison actually Aww. has a story about, I mean, I don't even know exactly what she's going to be telling us, but we're just going to give the microphone to her. But if you, <laughs> yes. If you don't know who she is, I will leave her story linked in the description box down below. She's also Jessica and Andrea's sister. Well, and Colleen and Gerald and Joe Robinson. And she has a lot of siblings. <laughs> That's a scary story. <laughs> Different kind of spooky. But so we're starting off with a Ouija board? Ouija board? Story? Ouija board. It's a Ouija board type of story. It's a very, very freaky, creepy time of my life. And it just, I, it was in the order. How old were you? I was 14. Oh my gosh. I was so scared of the dark at 14. I don't know how you did. Me do too. <laughs> but I slept with my light on my whole life. Me too. My mom actually went into my room and took my light bulb out of my ceiling because I always had slept with the light on. I'm scared of the fucking dark. What was it before or after the Ouija board? My whole life. <laughs> before and after. But, so there's a little bit of a backstory before the Ouija board. Just to kind of give a little bit of a, like, explanation. So I had, at the time when I was 14, then there was one of my sisters who she started kind of randomly nonchalantly just mentioning weird freaky things that were going on in her house it she was telling it to a lot of my sisters but i'm just gonna tell you from like my point of view things that i heard straight from her mouth and things that i saw and things that i experienced and so things that she specifically told me was there was this man named sebastian that was coming into her room and just turning things upside down in her room. Did uh, she talk about it like it was some guy that she knew or she knew it was like a spirit? Or how did she describe it, she him? She described him as if he was real. Like she didn't talk about it like it was a spirit. It was to her, it was a real person. I don't like, and like. Did she tell her parents or tell other people or just. She kids? definitely told, uh, she told other people, but I don't know who all she told. But mm -hmm. when she was telling me, then it was just kids around. But it was almost like. It was in it was in passing kind of like that's how it started it started as in just like a passing like we would be talking about something completely different and she'd be like just randomly mention like one thing that one thing that he did and we were like who's sebastian she's like just this man that comes into my room and i don't know i don't know if she if she thought it was a ghost but like I didn't question her because I thought she was the things that she was saying wasn't making a lot of sense and I wasn't really super motivated to f get more details and so but I was also, like you were very young too and I was so young you, I was yeah. only 14 and I, I was like what's happening okay anyways uh, yeah. <laughs> that's weird a lot of us did that we're just like huh? yeah and then it but it went on for months and it eventually started turning into like she would wear something odd and we would it would be so odd that we would ask like why are you wearing that? Or why do you have this on you? And she would say, oh, Sebastian put it on me. And then, so then it kind of started becoming a little bit concerning to me, but I didn't know what to do. And so I would kind of talk with my sisters like, is she lying? Is it real? Is, it, is there someone in their family named Sebastian? Is it a ghost? Like what, what? But then it's really, really got concerning when she started saying stuff like, Sebastian is telling me that I need to basically telling me I need to die or he's going to start doing to other people what he's doing to me and she would just say it in these ways that weren't clear it didn't mm -hmm. really make sense and then when we would try to get her to like extrapolate and explain more for me when I would try to get her to extrapolate extrapolate or explain more then it just was, it just seemed like the more confusing it got. Mm -hmm. But that was scary. And so I did personally 
let adults know like, hey, she's thinking that she's supposed to be dying. It was- Is anyone else concerned about this? Yeah, <laughs> and I can tell people were concerned, but it was, it was just really, really, really creepy how it turned into, yeah, he just moves things around in my room. And then a couple months later, it was like, yeah, he's telling me that I need to die. And then, or he's gonna start basically, or he's gonna start haunting you guys. And she told me like, okay, I don't want him to do to you, like to me, she said this to me, I don't want him to do to you what he does to me because it's so, it's She it's wouldn't scary. say exactly what he's doing to her. That's, That's the thing is, she did, but I can't remember. The main thing that I remember is I remember, cause I, cause like I said, I don't want to talk about things that other people told me that she told them, but mm -hmm. I, oh, things that I specifically remember her saying to me is that things were getting turned upside down. And then I remember seeing her wearing something odd. There were other things that other people told me that she also said to them, but I'm not exactly sure and I don't 100% remember. I really just only remember the things that she specifically said to me. Mm -hmm. Does parents get involved at any point? Par That's they, my... So I think they were behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So I didn't see much happening with parents in, with parents getting involved, but looking back, I think parents were and older adults were getting in, were getting involved and we just didn't realize it. So that's just a little explanation of the couple of months leading up to when my dumbass decided to go play with a Ouija board. It was your idea? No, 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 it I, it wasn't my idea. It was September, so it was getting close to Halloween. It was when all the spook alleys in Utah started to open up. So me and some of Daniel's other kids and a couple of other friends, we went to a spook alley. Was it the order night. spook alley? It was, it was a Asylum 49. So um, you, uh, someone in the order had a whole bunch of like really, really discounted tickets to Asylum 49. Not exactly sure why, but we always went to Asylum 49 because we had access to these tickets. Did you ever go? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, and I honestly, I thought it was because of the Tuckers and Priscilla Tucker. I think it was their uncle. That, I think it was too. Yeah. It but they had, irrelevant. They like, had, yeah, irrelevant. So we went to a spook alley and it was fun. Like we were spooked and... Then we were we weren't ready to go home. We wanted to go do something more, something else scary, and so it was. What his idea? Because mm -hmm. he had it. Why he was the one. I don't know. His trunk. But yeah, literally. Oh my god. He was the one driving, and it was just in his car. So he just had a Ouija board in his car, and he was like, "Let's go to a cemetery and play this." I didn't think it was real. I was like. We just went to a spook alley, like, what's now we go, let's go to a graveyard, like, who cares? It, nothing's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. It was... Okay. So it was like... Like, eight people? That was a lot of people. <laughs> it was like eight of us. And so we go to the Salt Lake City Cemetery because there was this rumor that there was a grave that the description of on the grave was victim of the beast 666 where was this at? Salt Lake City but victim I didn't believe it the so they were like no it's real it's real we'll go we'll take you to the grave and we'll play with a Ouija board at the cemetery and I was like okay like I was I was down I wasn't I was kind of hesitant but I wasn't against it and there were some people in the car that I could tell were like no I don't want to do that but then Eventually we all just ended up doing it because the driver was like, no, we're going, we're doing it. So then we go to the grave and we find the grave. The 666 one? We find the 666 grave and it's real. It really is like her name's like Lily or something. She dies in like the early 1900s. I don't really understand. By the beast, supposedly. I don't know. We tried, tried looking up her, why does her gravestone say that? And it never, none of the stories make sense. None of the stories have an answer. And so, but it, her gravestone does say, <clears throat> Victim? victim of the beast 666 so then we have the ouija board and we start using it but we we didn't start at the victim of the beast grave we started at a random grave and so i'm sure nobody believed in the ouija board i'm sure all of us were like this is stupid so we put the board on a gravestone didn't look at the name didn't look at the dates we picked a random gravestone put it on the gravestone so that we couldn't see it and we all put one finger on the little mouse thing mm -hmm. and it was like above it like we didn't t we weren't for me at least i wasn't touching it i was like brushing it like barely barely touching it because that's what the boy told us to do he's like this is how you do it like nobody like put much pressure on it just barely barely touch it it just needs to like it just needs to sense your energy so we'll have one all eight of us have like one finger on it and we ask the question I know for, for, for sure, for sure, for this grave, then we asked the question, how old are you? And it told us 70, it told us a number. And we lift up the board and we look at the birth date year and the death date year, and that was the number. What the hell? So from birth date to death date, 
then it was the number that it went to. And I was like, okay, that was pre-planned. Someone picked that grave out. Someone knew, already knew how old this person was. So someone's like messing with Yeah, us. so I'm like, okay, whatever. So I still wasn't convinced, but we kept doing it. And every single time we left a grave, then we would ask, can we leave in peace? And this specific one where it just told us a number said yes. It went to yes. We go to another one. And there was a couple times where we ask a question, nothing really happened. It was almost like when we were in the light, because you know how there's street lights? Mm -hmm. When we were in the, in the, when we had more street light, then it, then we got more more movement really and it really was it was moving and so but i still wasn't convinced that somebody one of these father muckles <laughs> was moving it but we get to this another grave and we all of our fingers are on it and it's moving it's doing its thing and then but it was like it would kind of spook you every time it moved because it wasn't like it was like you know it's like sudden like sudden and then like like a little bit at a time and then sudden Weird. a little bit at a time like it wasn't didn't go from a letter to a letter to a letter it was like it took off forever and so it kind of spooked you and so one of the times that it spooked us because it wasn't moving it wasn't moving and then it started moving and it scared everyone so everyone jumped up nobody was touching it and it kept moving no it kept moving i was watching it it kept moving for a, a good couple of inches and it was still moving and everyone was like are you watching this are you watching this and it was moving and nobody was touching it Creepy. then i was convinced what seeing that i was like yup okay i'm ready to go home now <laughs> like what were you guys asking it we were asking questions like, I don't know, we, was a lot of them were just like, how old are you? Because we wanted, we wanted to see if it would match the birth date and the death date year. Like, how old are you? And do you know this person? Like we would, if it was someone who had like two headstone, like two names on a headstone, like, do you know this other person? And I don't really know. I can't remember all the things that we were asking it, but then we always, always asked, can we leave in peace? Mm -hmm. And the last one that we used, I think it was the victim of the beast, said no. It went to no. And that was the all of one. them. All some of them didn't answer. Like some of them, we, when we'd ask, "Can we live in peace?" We sit there for a minute. And we're like, "Okay, we can't go until it tells us we can live in peace." Some of them wouldn't answer. The first grave we did said yes, and then this last one, the victim of the beast, said no. But we needed to get home, so we left anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like that's too bad. It started storming. Like it was, it was September. It was kind of, it was like starting to get cold, but it was still like maybe like light jacket weather. But after like 15 minutes of being in the cemetery, it started pouring rain. And so we ended up leaving. And then I go to bed, I wake up and I get the news that my sister who had been telling us about Sebastian is dead. It was the morning? The out? next morning. Wow. We played with the Ouija board, two in the morning, like the middle of the night, went home and then slept and then woke up, found out that she's dead. And I'm not saying that the Ouija board caused it. Did you feel like that at all when you, that uh, news oh, happened? At 14 years old, being in the order and learning this, the things that they taught us about demons and spirits, I was convinced that we caused it. Yeah. I was so, it was... I felt so guilty and I was so, so scared that we caused it. That's sad. But all of this freaky, freaky stuff just happened like back to back to back. And so, so she dies and then I swear it was either whatever was haunting her or whatever told us that we couldn't leave in peace, whoever or whatever or wherever it came from, there was something haunting me. Yeah. And we were in the process of moving. So we moved out. We were moving from one house to another. And in the order, we know that when you sell a house, you don't actually sell it. You just, you move out. And then another order family gets, gets your house now. And so we moved out of our house and uh, another order family moved into our old house. And so obviously we knew who was living in our old house and, and they knew who we were. And so... The new, the new mom of the house, she had younger kids, and she asked, 
one of my friends, someone that she knew that was like friends with me, the, you know, the family that used to live, that lived in the house prior to her. She asked her, um, whose room had blue and green walls? Because my kids call that room the room with the monsters and they will not go in there. And it was my room. My room was the room with the green and blue walls. And so after we moved out of that house and the new family moved in, the kids of the new family would not go into my old room because they called it the room with the monsters. Weird. So wait, when you were in there, were you getting spooked by this thing, but then you were, when you were out, you weren't anymore? No, I, I was still getting spooked, but it was, it was really, really bad in that room and I remember so it was like literally we played with the Ouija board on a Friday night and it was like that weekend we were moving out of our house and so when we were when I was going back to my old house to pull stuff from my old room to move it to the new house then I was so I had just had this horrible horrible eerie feeling whenever I would go in my room and it was downstairs and I didn't even dare go, and go downstairs unless my older brother, his room was also downstairs. So unless he was going downstairs to get stuff out of his room, I was way too scared to even go into my room and get anything because it just was such an icky feeling in there. And then I really don't think it ever stopped. I don't think that there was a moment of feeling like there was nothing, but it was, um, it was, mostly, in my, it was mostly my dreams and then just the feeling. I never saw anything. I never heard anything. But the feeling, I will never forget. It was just like some, it was just cold, cold air and just knowing I am not the only one in this room. I knew there was something else in there. Yeah, so and like something's just constantly watching you. Yeah, and it was in my dreams. In my dreams is when I would see it. And I would see, I had a lot, a lot of dreams of, I would dream that I walked in on my sister, my si I, I dreamed that I would walk in on my sister's dead body and there would be these things around her. And then um, the things would notice me, all turn and look at me and then like come towards me and like flash towards me and then I would wake up. But I would have this dream often and I would always wake up and like, I'm, I, I just knew there, there was something wrong like there was something haunting me and it was so bad that I asked Daniel if he would come and bless my room because I was so scared <laughs> and he did right and he did he Daniel did come and he came down into my room and we we talked about the power of we talked about the power of prayer and how he was gonna bless my room and I need I needed to really pay attention to the prayer he said because if he felt like if I felt like I needed to Resay the prayer, then I can resay it when he was gone. Did that help you? Do you think it gave you like peace of mind? After it actually maybe? did. Honestly, it did help. It's the power in your hands, I guess. Yeah, it, I felt the nightmares eventually slowed down. They didn't stop for a long time, but that creepy, horrible, awful feeling of just knowing in your soul that you are not the only one in here, and you look around and you are the only one in there, but knowing that you're not. Yeah. was that it was it was scary i never ever ever since then even after like other scary things i've experienced never ever felt that feeling a again it was just that during that time yeah did you ever ask like any of the other kids that yes were in, if they had the similar experience yeah so a lot of the other kids who were played with the ouija board they told they would tell me that they felt the same thing like they felt like they weren't alone they were having these nightmares a lot of them some of them were also dreaming of my sister. Some of them were also dreaming of seeing this thing that was following her around. And... Oh, that scared me. It's the dog. It's the dog. It's the dog. <laughs> Sebastian. And I've never played with a Ouija board. There was a point in my life where I had never had any spooky stuff happen. So I was like, yeah, I'd go to a graveyard and play with a Ouija board. No. But, don't. Yeah. It's I'm, not. I was like, oh my god, I want to experience something like that. Like, just know it's real. And you don't want to fuck with it. Yeah. Because it's terrifying. I was one who I didn't believe it was real. And even after, and I remember after the, the mouse on the Ouija board would, would move around and we were all, and people were still touching it, I remember trying so hard to convince myself they're the ones moving it, they're the ones moving it, mm -hmm. it's not moving on its own, they're the ones moving it. Because my brain refused to believe 
that this was real. I'm sure everyone was thinking that. <laughs> yeah, that's why we kept doing it. But it, that thing on the Ouija board was moving by itself. Because yeah. it started to move. It like was, so, it was still for a while. And we were just, we'd ask the question, nothing. Ask the question, nothing. And then all of a sudden it moved and it scared us. So we all jumped back and it was still moving and it it was real and you never played with one ever again no i never <laughs> played with one ever 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 again yeah i don't think i'll ever play with one especially after doing a seance with colleen that one time what we the didn't fuck even, i i talked about it in my last year's creepy videos it's just called the seance maybe i'll link that down below but that's the one experience i had with that's similar to ouija board they use flashlights and they would ask yes and no questions and i felt something follow me home like that's I, it's real. Mm -hmm. Something will follow you. And I believe even if it tells you, yes, you can leave in peace. Don't fucking believe it. Yeah. Don't we do did not. It straight up told us that we couldn't. Sorry, I'm swearing. It straight <laughs> up told us that we couldn't leave in peace. I believe with my whole soul that it was not just one thing that followed us home. Yeah. It had to have been more. It was. Well, and if they're all having the same experience. A lot of us were having the same experience. A lot of us were having similar dreams. And it was... That's so creepy. It was so terrifying. And it was honestly... I ended up leaving the order a year later. I would say a year and two months later is when I ended up leaving the order. Mm -hmm. And I would say that it, it didn't fully leave me alone until I left the order. Wow. And so I felt... After Daniel came and he blessed the room, I felt better and then with time i felt better but it was always just this creepy like just dark feeling in my room this dark feeling in the whole in the house really maybe that was just the depression of being in the order but yeah, it maybe. never <laughs> it never i never felt a weight lifted off of me from that specific Ouija board experience until I left the order. Wow. The end to think that those kids were like, that room is the scary room, that room's Yeah. Me. They called my old room the room with the monsters. And I'm like, I believe it because there were some monsters in there. Yeah. That's scary. Well, I guess the what you should take away from this video is don't ever play with a Ouija board. <laughs> no. Don't ever play with a Ouija board. <laughs> Unless you know what you're getting into. No. Even if you know what you're trying to do. <laughs> Even if you know, just don't do it. Just be, yeah. Be smart. It's not worth it. Go watch a scary movie. Go to a spook alley. Don't go try talking to the dead. Unless you're just praying because I guess praying is not like that. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like praying know. is a little seance of your own. <laughs> that, exactly. But yeah, that's, but, but we that's were at a cemetery and we were uh, stupid kids. Oh, yeah. So different. That's the story of that. And if I can find pictures of that beast... It's six, online. Six, six. I'm gonna show you guys pictures. I think of her name is Lillian Gray. Yeah. And this Lillian yourself. Gray has nothing to do with the order. We that was just the grave that us order kids went to to go play with the mm -hmm. Ouija. And I remember hearing about that grave stone from people and just not thinking it was real. I just want to make sure that everyone is aware that I'm not trying to like take advantage of this spooky time to tell this very very um, actually really really sad and sensitive part of not only mine but a lot of people's lives but i just it was a really really scary time for me mm -hmm. and i did experience a lot of creepy things and it just so happened to be around the same time that there was a death in the family mm -hmm. so they just kind of you know they were just around the same time and they kind of played into each other and i was a child so i think the death in the family and then pl playing with something like a ouija board combined um really really messed with my 14 year old head yeah and so and this is all from your perspective this is all from my so. perspective like i know there was other i know there were other, this is just things that i was there for and things that i was personally told mm -hmm. not things that someone was like i heard this person said this like none this of that it's just what someone specifically told me about their experience or what i experienced myself mm -hmm. i you're pretty ballsy to have you know, play with the Ouija board at that young. But I guess a lot of the kids did. And I had no idea that the kids were just running around doing that in the order. Yeah, <laughs> and it took me a long, long time to even tell that. I used to never tell that story. Because it was that scary? Because it was that it's scary. Because if I, when I would tell it, then I would remember that feeling that I felt. And just remembering the feeling kind of made me feel it again. And it was that fucking scary. Yeah. Then I'm like, I can't it. even talk about it. Oh, yeah. Years and for years. I couldn't even talk about it and tell the story from beginning to end just because 
it brings it, it back brought to you. it back yes, yeah. it would bring it back and i was like i can't i kind of i, I there was times like okay i'll tell the story but i'm not going to tell it in my own house like mm -hmm. it was that bad but oh yeah i definitely have stories like that too um where i still have a hard time talking about certain creepy stories because i don't know fully i can't comprehend fully what what the thing was mm -hmm. if it was in my head like what's crazier that you're crazy or that there's an actual spirit in your head you know what's worse <laughs> i don't know but and that's the thing i don't know i don't know i don't yeah. know if it was the mind is a power is a powerful thing that ouija board moved on its own mm -hmm. that really happened yeah <laughs> but everything that happened before and everything that happened after maybe it was all in my head mm -hmm. i don't know but well, it happened the ouija board thing you have to believe that that happened because there was done a tons of witnesses there too. was witnesses and it was like i said up until i saw it move on its own i was blaming it on anybody else mm -hmm.